So now I have my rubber mold all ready to go to make a reproduction of this uh, chest piece here. So it's a wooden night piece. And in the previous video, I sh or videos, I uh, showed you how to uh, pour the mold, remove the original from the mold. And in the end of the last video, I talked about opening up a uh, sprue hole in the top so that you have a, uh, a place to pour whatever you're going to be uh, casting the uh, duplicates out of. So you can see, I cut this sprue hole in the top. I just took a utility knife and cut a funnel shaped hole right into the bottom of the piece. So now I'm gonna put that back into a cup so that when I uh, pour my, uh, in this case, dragon skin rubber is what I'm gonna be using. But when I pour that rubber in here, you wanna make sure that it has some sort of watertight seal so that it doesn't leak out of the mold. So I have my setup here all ready to go. I have this uh, mold in a cup on a plate so that any spillage doesn't uh, make a mess anywhere. And then I have two additional cups that I'm gonna be measuring my uh, part A and part B out into. And this is just like in the previous video where we're gonna be uh, mixing part A and part B uh, equally by either weight or volume. And I'm just gonna measure by volume um, using these uh, disposable cups right here. But you can see that for this casting, again, this is uh, made by Smooth On, and this is a type of rubber called Dragon Skin 30. So this is part B, right here is part A, and you can see it says stir well before using. So I am going to open these up and get them stirred up before I start mixing. All right, so now I have my parts uh, A and B mixed up here, and I have my cups ready to put it in. So you can see I have a mark here where I'm going to try and fill to. And I have that same mark in both cups so that I can get an equal amount of volume of both parts A and B. So I'm going to take part B and add it into this mixing cup up to that fill line as best I can. And then I'm gonna take part A and do the same thing in this cup. And of course you don't wanna be wasteful and mix too much, but at the same time you wanna make sure that you have enough. So you always should make a little bit more than what you actually are going to need. And if you're unsure on how to determine that, the best way to do it is you can take a beaker full of water and just measure the displacement of whatever your original is. And then um, whatever that amount is in volume, you can measure the same thing out in these. This right here, it's a small enough piece that I have a pretty good idea of what it is. So I just uh, kind of went with what I was visualizing needed to be the, uh, the volume. And I think I need a new mixing stick for this. So I'm going to now pour part A into part B. I'm gonna use a clean mixing stick to help that along. And this is a little different than in the previous video where the previous uh, mix job that we did with the uh, Umu 30 rubber, it was two very different color parts. For uh, Dragon Skin 30 here, both parts are actually really clear, so it's kind of hard to see when they're properly mixed. So you want to make sure that, in this case, you're doing a really thorough job of mixing. So I'm going to mix this up real thoroughly. And I would say you want to mix for a minimum of 30 seconds here. If you look on the instructions on uh, Dragon Skin 30, which you should always look at the instructions of any new material that you're using uh, because they're all slightly different, Dragon Skin 30 says that it has a pot life of 45 minutes. What that means is you can work with this and it should be pourable for 45 minutes. So you actually have a pretty long working time here. 
So you don't have to be in a rush when you're using dragon skin. Some things you mix up, some epoxies you mix up, and you literally have like 30 seconds to get it applied. So you want to make sure you're always checking on the particular material you, that you're using and what its properties are. But anyway, Dragon Skin 30 says it has a pot life of 45 minutes and then it has a cure time of 16 hours. So this in particular will need to sit at minimum overnight. So we'll check back on this in the morning after I pour it. Now, one side note that I'll say is this is a really thick liquid. You can see it's settling down here, but this is going to probably have a tendency to build up bubbles. You can see a bubble that is coming to the surface right here. So what that means is you don't want to end up with bubbles trapped down in the bottom of your mold. So you want to make sure that you take extra care to try and work those back out. And you can do that a number of different ways by taking a small metal rod down into the mold after you've poured it. Uh, by tapping it, by letting some leak out the bottom to allow air to escape. Um, so there's different ways you can go about doing that depending on what your mold looks like. So I think I have this mixed up sufficiently now. So I'm going to start to pour this into the mold. And this is so thick that the small hole that I have here could become a little bit problematic. So I'm going to just be real careful pouring that. And you always want to make sure that you pour more material than what you need. So you want to completely overfill that sprue hole. And the sprue hole is just that hole that's cut in the bottom that I'm pouring into. If the, and I'm going to, again, overfill that real good. And if you're making multiple pours, of course, you would want to mix up enough um, of your material so that you can pour all of them. But uh, I'm going to tap this and kind of squeeze it and make sure that all of that material settles all the way down in to make sure that I don't have any air bubbles down in the bottom. And if that ends up making it so that there is a cavity there, I may end up adding a little bit more material to it. But otherwise, this is ready to go, and I'm going to let it set overnight. Like I said, it has a 16-hour cure time, so we'll check back in on it tomorrow. All right, so I'm ready to demold uh, the uh, replica that I made of the uh, chess piece, and the chess piece that I chose was a wooden uh, knight piece. And I was using Dragon Skin 30, and I was using that Dragon Skin 30 to uh, pour a duplicate in a mold that I created with Umu 30. And um, what you'll find, and what I found here, is that some of these rubbers are actually incompatible with each other. So um, on the surface, this Dragon Skin 30 seems like it's cured. It seems like um, it is ready to uh, remove from the mold. This right here is an example of what Dragon Skin 30 should be like when it is dry. And you can see it's really durable. It's really flexible. It's completely dry. I poured this at the exact same time that I poured this mold right here. Um, but what we're gonna see is that these two rubbers are actually incompatible with each other. So it looks like this is all good to go. So I'm gonna start to remove this and it's kind of tough to get out of the Dixie cup. But when I start to lift up this surface, you can see that it's almost like it's not cured underneath this top edge here. And the reason being, um, this is a silicone type of rubber that we poured into, and um, it's just not compatible with a cure. So when I open this up right here, you'll see that I have my night piece in there, but the outside of it looks like it is still like waiting to be cured in when in fact it's had plenty of cure time and the problem is it's just incompatible rubbers uh, the two surfaces there so you can see that it did a really good job of getting all of the detail in the mold but we are going to do another test with a different material and try out uh, this mold with something else this particular uh, rubber, Dragon Skin 30, turns out as far as what we have access to here, it actually, I think, is a really good choice.
for a lot of applications. Um, you just won't be able to cast it in a mold that you made with Umu 30 rubber. Um, where I cast this piece that turned out well, I actually just used a uh, 3D print that I made uh, to cast the mold uh, just for that example. But a 3D print mold will work perfectly fine with dragon skin.